Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio, and today I'm going to teach you about gradients. What is a gradient? Gradient is a transition, a gradual transition from one color to another. And that's what I'm going to show you, how to transition from one color to another on your UI view. Okay, we're also going to learn some other things too, because gradients are created on a layer. UI views have layers, and that's what we create our gradient on, it's on the layer, not actually on the UI view itself. So you're going to learn about the layer object, and you're going to also learn about how to better reuse gradients in a more efficient manner. But first, let's start with a simple example. If we go into our view controller, let's clean up some of this code, existing code here. And in order to create a gradient, we first need a gradient layer. So we create that with a variable, say new layer equals CA gradient layer right there. And whoa, what is this? What is this CA gradient layer? Well, like I said, all views have a layer. And you might have used layers before when you type in view.layer right there. And then you maybe you've added uh, drop shadows or rounded corners, things like that to your views. Well, you do that on the layer. And Apple says this about layer objects. They say layers manage your app's visual content and provide options for modifying the style and visual appearance of that content. And that's basically what a layer is. So what does the CA mean right here? Well, CA basically just stands for core animation. It's basically your layers, they fall under the framework of core animation. To me, you know, from what I've read to you, like about that definition, layers manage your app's visual content and provide options for modifying the style and visual appearance of that content. To me, that just means that it's more like, it shouldn't have been core animation. It should have been more like core presentation. Because yeah, you can do animation with the layers and animations happen on the layer level, but a lot of other things happen besides animations on layers. Like, like that definition, like Apple's own definition, they say it's responsible for the visual content. So it should have been, to me, it should have been more like core presentation, <laughs> but we're not gonna get into that. Let's just uh, continue with what we have here. Basically, I hope that gives you a better understanding of what layers are. And views can have multiple layers. So we're like this new layer, we're going to add this to the existing default layer on the view. So now that we have a gradient layer, gradient, gradient layers have properties that help us set up our gradient. And the first property we're going to use is the colors property. And colors is basically like it says here, it's, it's an array of color references that control our gradients control the colors in our gradients. For this example, I'm just going to use two colors to keep it simple. But just know that you can use many colors and you can have those colors transition gradually from one to the next to the next to the next. But for this example, we're going to start with a UI color black. And we're going to use the CG color. That's basically the core graphics color version of, the, uh, of a UI color. And for the next color, We'll have it transition into a dark gray. And we want the CG color. Now that we have our layer, we also need to tell it how big it has to be, how big that layer is. So what we're going to do is, since we're going to add this layer to our main view on the storyboard, we're just going to use the same frame as our main view. So we'll say new, new layer dot frame equals our default view dot frame. And that is basically the size of uh, the device. All right, great. Now we have our new layer. How do we add it? Well, like I said, views can contain many layers. So we want to go to the layer and we want to add a new sub layer. Just like that. So this will add our new gradient on top of the existing layer. So let's take a look here. There it is. There's your gradient. It goes from black to dark gray. But notice there's something missing here, right? So I started out with this view, and this is the view that I'm adding the gradient to. But where's our label? Should be there, right? All right. This layer that we added is on top of everything else. Let's go to our view controller, and let's fix that. Now, if you've worked with other graphic design programs, you might already know about layers. When you create like an icon or an image or you change, make, you know, like 
using Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator or Sketch, you work with different layers and you can change the order of the layers to make one image on top of another or you know one vector graphic on top of another. Well you can do the same thing with these layers too. So there's different options for controlling where the layer goes. Right here. So when we add layers, we can insert it at a certain index or we can make it above or below another existing layer. So for this example, I'm just going to put this layer all the way at the back. And to put it at the back, we're going to just put it at index zero. All right. Now let's see if that fixes it. Oh, we don't need this anymore, so we're going to get rid of that. There it is. So now this layer is all the way in the back. All right, great. So that's the basics of adding a gradient to your UI view. But what if you want to reuse this? And what if you want to put this on other UI views? You'd have to like copy and paste this code all the time, right? But instead, I'm going to show you an easier way where you can create a designable out of this. A designable is basically, it's giving a UI view more functionality that you can alter and change right in the storyboard. So let's see how that's done. I'm going to add a new file. It's going to be a Cocoa Touch class. And we want it to be a subclass of UI view. And subclassing basically just means you're going to take an existing class and add more functionality on top of it. And that's what we're going to. So we're going to take the UI view class and we're going to add gradient functionality on top of it. So I'm just going to call this a gradient view. And we'll just put it right in the project. All right, here we go right here. And let's get rid of this, some of this code here that we don't need. Now, I talked to you about changing the color inside of the storyboard. Because instead of like changing the color in code and running it every time and seeing if you get the gradient right and if it looks right, well, I want to be able to just change the colors right on my storyboard and see it change real time. So in order to do that, I need to take this class and I need to give it an attribute called Interface Builder Designable. And this will allow me to change that class right on the storyboard or right inside of the Interface Builder. That's what the IB stands for, Interface Builder. And when we come in and we change views inside of the, you know, on a storyboard, or if you create like a zip file, that's your interface builder. So when we created this gradient, we used two colors. So we know we're going to need two properties that we can just change. Like if we have this view selected, I want to be able to change two colors on here for my first color in my gradient and my second color in my gradient. I'm only using two colors right now. In order to do that, I need two properties on this class. And when I create properties, I need to give them this attribute here called IB inspectable and it's interface builder inspectable. And basically this will, this means that it will make the property show up in the interface builder. So we need two colors, so I'll just say first color, oops, not fist color, first color. And this will be a type of UI color. And let's give it a default value too. UI color dot clear. Yeah, let's just leave it like that. And we know we're going to need a second color. Okay, let's copy that, paste it, and we'll call this second color. Okay, good. So now we have two two properties, and they both have the IV inspectable attribute on them. So that means if I come here, and right now this view is a type of UI view. It says right here for class UI view. So if I click on this drop down, I'll see the gradient view, which is also a type of UI view, but we added more functionality on top of that UI view. So it's going to update. Now it's up to date. So now if I come over to the attributes inspector, I'll see I have my first color and second color. But right now, it's setting changing the colors doesn't doesn't do anything, right? It's not changing the gradient because we haven't written that code yet. So we need to detect when a person changes these colors. And we do that with the did set. Did set, it's not, it has no autocomplete for it. So I'm hoping Apple will fix that in the future. But this will, this get triggered every time you call the did set. Now, when a person sets a color, we want to be able to update the gradient. And I could take this code and put it inside of this did set to create my gradient. But it's, I'd be repeating the code for the second color. And if you want to add a third color and a fourth color, you'd be repeating that code over and over again. And instead of repeating the code, let's just create the code one time. 
So we'll just call a common method called update view. Doesn't exist yet. And every time you set these colors, it'll update, it'll call this function. So let's create that function. So now, every time you change the color for the first color, it's gonna call this function. This is what's gonna create our gradient. So let's just take this code, and we know we're going to need this for our second color. So we'll just add it like that. Clean up a little bit. Okay, update view. So what's gonna happen in here? Well, if we look at our code back here, we know we do a couple of things. We create a gradient layer, and we give it colors, and we give it a size, and then we insert it. Because this view right here will be representing something on the storyboard, we don't have to set a size, because when you add a view to the storyboard, it already has a size. And so we don't have to manually tell it what size it has to be, because it will know what size it is just from, from the information that's in here. So we don't have to worry about giving it a size. And also, we don't have to worry about creating a new layer because what I want to do instead, since we're creating a UI view that is a, a gradient view, I want to be able to use that existing layer that it has and convert it to a gradient view. So that's the first thing we need to do. We need to be able to get a view that is a type of gradient view. And you can do that, like if I click, if you hold down the command button and you go into the UI view, this is what we're going to do. See this property right here called layer class? We're going to override this because by default, it returns a CA layer class. We don't want a CA layer class. We want a CA gradient layer class. So um, Apple does give you a way to override that. And that's what we're going to do. Let's go in here and let's override that layer class. And basically we just need the word override. And you want a lot of that same code that we saw inside of the UI view. See this class layer. Let's copy that. Go back, paste that in there. And it is a type of any class. It said swift.any class, right? But since we're in a Swift file, we can just say any class. Okay, and when this is called, it's basically just has a getter. Let's take a look at that again. Yeah, it just has a getter. You can't set it, you can only get it. So we need to provide a getter. And we're going to return now remember by default it returns a ca layer class but we don't want that we want a ca gradient layer class like that and we just have to say self okay so now here when i create a variable like so and i say self dot layer now take a look at this here you see the default type is ca layer the type is a CA layer. What we have to do is we have to cast it or convert it to a CA gradient layer. Because that's what this is returning. CA gradient layer. Okay, good. Now we have the default layer. We've converted it to a gradient layer. So now we just have to set the colors. Colors equals. Okay, and we're just going to use our first color and we have to convert it to a uh, CG color. And then we're going to use our second color. We have to convert that to a core graphics color. Core graphics color right there. Okay, that should be it. Let's see how that works. It's compiling our gradient view. All right, there it is. We already had a first color set, so it's using that. And it is using the second color as the, our clear color. And if we change that clear color to something else, Oh, I don't know, let's make it black. There, then now you can see a smooth transition. And I can do the same thing with this UI view too. I just come in here, I change it to a gradient view, and then I come to the attributes inspector. And remember, because we're taking an existing view, it's going to retain all the same properties that a view has. We're just adding additional functionality on top of it. And then I can change these colors to something else something like that. There you go. So that's how you create gradients. And now if you want to reuse it, it's easy to reuse by just using this class here. And if you want to reuse this class in your other projects, all you have to do is just copy it and just drag it into your project 
And, and once it's in your project, then you can go to your storyboard and change your, its type, the class type to gradient view and just add some colors in there, then you're all set. And now I can just change these colors. And for me, it's better because I'm a more of a visual guy, so I can just see how it looks right away. So there's more that you can explore from here. For example, the, the gradient layer also has a locations property. And that works the same way. It's an array of numbers that tell you where the, the color stops. So right now, you know, these colors, they start at, the, at one end of the view and the second color starts at the other end of the view. But you can have it extend further down. The locations is basically a number between zero and one. Think of it as like a percentage. So if I wanted this first color to go, let's say 50% down the UI view before it starts to gradually change into the other color, then I can say 0 0.5 for 50%. So now the first color will go to 50%, down 50% of the view before it starts to change. And we can see how that looks. Uh, that, oh, you know what the problem is? <laughs> I never took the code out of, out of here. So we just take that out. And actually, you know, I, <laughs> I don't even know why I'm doing this. I don't even really even have to run the program. I can just come to the storyboard and see the changes. There we go. So now you see the, the gradient just came down further. So now it's coming all the way down to 50%, which is, I'm pretty sure is right where this arrow is. And before it starts to gradually change into the other color. And you can test it with another UI view. You know, do something like this, stick it right in the middle and uh, change this to a gradient view. And then give it another color. Let's give it a dark color. Yeah, you see here, it goes all the way to the middle before it starts to change and gradiently change into the second color. So there you go. There's some uh, information about the gradient. And of course, with this locations, you could create another property or create two more properties so you can change the locations for the first color and the second color. Those are just some other ways that you can explore if you want to, if you want to continue expanding and extending uh, what we have here. So I hope you learned something about gradients. I also showed you some things about the layer class and how layers work. And you also learned about IB designables and IB inspectables and how you can use designables in multiple projects so you don't have to keep copying and pasting the same code. Thank you. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing.